Hello everyone and welcome to my nerdy little corner of the internet. Today we will be talking about all 121 artifact spells in Limited for the Brothers War. There is going to be an artifact in every single pack. In every single draft pack there's going to be a retro card that connects to the history of magic with the retro frame as an artifact. Now, sometimes those retro frames are going to be like the blueprint schematic. But the point is, is that we're going to have these kind of outside of standard cards in our draft atmosphere. And all of them are artifacts. Not to mention the artifacts that are already in this set. And just so we're clear, all of my other videos for this were like two pages of script. This one for the artifacts is like four five pages so please forgive me if I do not put as much emphasis on each card <laughs> but without further ado I rate all these cards on the scale from ne negative one to three for each archetype that they can be in the archetypes are now shown on your screen if you want to learn more about how I grade these cards please check the description below Adaptive Automaton is the perfect lord, and the only tribal archetype is soldiers. Aeronaut's Wings grants flying to a creature if you want to get over those blockers. Aetherflux Reservoir is going to gain you life. It's not going to win you the game, it's going to gain you life. Altar of Dementia is the perfect sacrifice outlet, as you can mill yourself or your opponent for value. Arcane Proxy is a slow Snapcaster Mage or a slow Torrential Gear Hulk with cost limitations. Orgavian Avenger is a versatile creature and not that expensive due to power stones. Ashnod's Altar is a great sack outlet to play big boys on turn three or four. Ashnod's Harvester performs surgery on your opponent's graveyard and trades up. Astral Cornucopia can be used to ramp with your power stones for non-artifact creatures. Autonomous Assembler is a very slow grower. It's a filler. Black Blade Reforged is a strong sword that likes famous people. Blade Coil Serpent can draw cards, make your opponent discard cards, or get big and get in very fast, or a combination of the three. Blitz Automaton goes <laughs> Bone Saw is a free artifact that makes a creature better. Boulder Branch Golem is a common big boy that gains life. Burnished Heart is a deer that sacrifices itself and gets lands for you. Caged Sun ramps and pumps your board for amazing combos. Chromantic Lantern is good in 3 plus color decks. Chromatic Star is a fancy sacrifice artifact draw card. Cityscape Leveler is a big boy that turns your opponent's big boys into power stones. Clay Champion makes himself big or other creatures big. Clay Revenant is an artifact skeleton that chump blocks pretty decently. Cloud Key makes your favorite card type cheaper. Choose artifacts! Coastal Bulwark is a 3-3 wall in blue that lets you fix your hand. Combat Courier is a little buddy that jump blocks and draws you a card and then pings in a little bit and draws you another card. Combat Thresher Double Strike is a good keyword and replacing itself is also pretty good. Cradle Clear Cutter is a mana ramper that needs mana ramping to play. Defense Grid hates control players. Depth Charge Colossus hates aggro players. Door to Nothingness hates playing magic. Drag Dream Claws has free equip. It looks okay. Elsewhere Flask draws a card. Energy Refractor turns your power stones into half lands. Falaji Dragon Engine is a good prototype, but is bad in its full design. Foundry Inspector makes your artifacts cheaper, and that's pretty good. Gilded Lotus adds three mana a turn in a set that has expensive creatures. Goblin Char Belcher belches Char when it should be in the trash. Goblin Firebomb is a one cost prowess trigger that eventually kills a creature. Gordon Warplow is a 1 1 death touch that could be a great threat later in the game. Haywire Might is a caterpillar that isn't as good as a caterpillar. Heavyweight Demolisher is a big scary boy who sometimes scares himself into doing nothing. Hum of Host looks at the most valuable creature and hits copy paste. Hulking Metamorph is the guy who copies your homework, but somehow has a better grade and body than you. Iker Wellspring enters the battlefield to draw a card, and is sacrificed to draw a card. Inspiring Sanctuary turns your power stones into lands effectively. That's pretty good. Iron Crawl Crusher helps his best friend on the attack. Ivory Tower rewards you for not playing magic by letting you die less quickly. Jellum Totem is pretty cool for the blue-black deck, but otherwise it's kind of meh. Journeyer's Kite is a bad land finder. Keening Stone punishes self-mill decks hard. Key to the City makes your big boys unblockable. 
fills the graveyard or draws you an extra card. Levitating Statue is like the Watcher from Marvel. Doesn't do anything until the plot says so. Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter is sudden, small, and gets big quick. Also gives your other artifacts flash. Liquid Metal Coating turns your non-artifacts into artifacts for a turn. Lodestone Golem is a bad card. I don't know why it keeps getting reprinted. It's not good. Mask of the Jade Crafter makes a big boy, comes back and makes another big boy. Maze Mind Tome draws your cards, scries, and then gives you life. It's a nice control card. Mesmeric Orb turns the game into who can win without doing anything. Mind's Eye says, hey, I'll pay the one. Mind Worker is only okay if you have the other workers. Mistress Bobble is a free artifact that lets you draw a card. Mishra's Juggernaut just keeps swinging in. Mishra's Research Desk helps you find cards that are actually helpful. Mox Amber is only good with Planeswalkers and Legendaries. Mystic Forge lets you play Storm with artifacts. Ornithopter is a free artifact. Perilous Vault exiles everything. Perennial Behemoth is a big toughness boy who lets you play lands from the grave. Phyrexian Dragon Engine lets you turn Mishra into a deity while it attacks. Phyrexian Processor pays life and then you get to make tokens. Phyrexian Wargorger is a warded creature that makes your opponent lose life while you gain life. Platinum Angel keeps you from losing and dares the opponent to have removal. Platoon Dispensary makes tokens and then draws cards for having tokens. Portal to Phyrexia makes your opponent sacrifice creatures and then you just reanimate any creature every turn. Power Plant Worker is one of the workers. You need to work to make it work. Precursor Golem makes copies of itself, and then if you buff one with a spell, you buff all of them with, with a copy of the spell. Pristine Talisman gains you life while making mana. Psychosis Crawler punishes your opponent for letting you stay alive. Quicksilver Amulet can cheat out the big creatures in the set. Kytus Spike turns every creature into a big threat despite your opponent's life gain. Ramos Dragon Engine likes 3 plus car color decks. But he's okay here. Razor Lash Trasmograt is a constructed card. Reconstructed Thopter is a humble little chump blocker. Root Wire Amalgam is a scared baby and sacrifices itself to bring the mother robot. Rune Chanter's Pike gives a creature a great ability and a good power boost. Rust Goliath is just a big boy. Scrap Trawler turns every artifact into a recursion piece. Scrapwork Cohort brings a robot friend with them. Scrapwork Mutt fixes your hand and is good on the aggressive curve. Scrapwork Rager draws a card but is a little small. Sculpting Steel is a copy of the best artifact you have and can be targeted with all the reanimator spells. Self Assembler can tutor for an assembly worker, such as the worker cards previously mentioned. Semblance Anvil lets you play your favorite cards for a much cheaper cost. Sigil of Valor gives all other creatures exalted for this creature. Simeon Simulacrum puts counters on things. Skitter Beam Battalion is one of the best artifact creatures in the set. Slagstone Refinery turns scrap metal into power stones. Soul Guide Lantern leads dead creatures to the afterlife and graveyard decks to their doom. Spectrum Sentinel is meant for constructed, but it's not terrible. Spotted Thopter scries for you and then sits around in the air. Springleaf Drum causes fast mana for aggressive decks. Staff of Domination could really do some damage in this set. Steel Exemplar only wants to be powered by Power Stones, or five of the same color. Steel Seraph gives another creature some of the best keywords in the game. Stone Retrieval Unit is a decent filler for the ramp deck. Suchi Cave Guard is meant to be cheated in and then sacrificed for ramping. Sundering Titan is a big boy who destroys land needlessly. Supply Drop is a combat trick that can draw you a card later in the game. Surge Engine is an upgrader that doesn't keep upgrading. Swift Foot Boots makes your deck that little bit faster and protects your best creature. Swift Gear Drake is expensive, but does remove a card from your opponent's grave. Sword of the Meek works best in the Soldier deck and the Sacrifice deck. Symmetry Matrix can let you draw a bunch of cards in the Soldier deck. Teresium Mind Blanker is meant for constructing. The Might Stone and Weak Stone can either draw you cards or remove a medium-sized creature. The Stasis Coffin is a glorified fog effect. The Stone Brain is meant for constructed. Thorn of Amethyst is meant for those aggressive creature-focused decks. 
Thran Power Suit is the best equipment for Voltron decks. Thran Spider ramps both of you, but it has a good activated ability to get you to your big artifacts. Takasia's Amulet is a filler artifact creature card. At least it gains life. Tower Worker is the last worker, and since it's a worker, you need to work to make it work. Transmigrant Altar is perfect for the Black Red deck. Transmigrant's Crown is a less broken skull clamp. Unwinding Clock is great as you untap all your power stones to activate more abilities. Urza Silax is a turn everything to turn six. Veteran's Power Blade is decent for the soldier's deck, but I'd rather have another soldier. Well of Lost Dreams is decent, as there are some life gain triggers in this set. Worm Coil Engine is the best card in the set, no question, hands down, it's the only tier S plus card. Imagine sacrificing this thing and then reanimating it in the same turn. Yes, that can happen. And finally, we have Yodian Frontliner. It's a decent first drop for the aggro decks. I really hope you all enjoyed my videos of rating the cards for Brothers War Limited. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below your thoughts. And later on this week, during pre-release weekend, I am going to be opening a collector's booster box. Graciously being opened on behalf of Mimics JC, my LGS. And I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you there. Bye.